everybody here is Pam at the Paper Outpost and I am just making some fun covers that can be used in multiple different ways. These use quilting squares if you have any um, fabric that you want to use up that's a very simple and easy way uh, to incorporate it into a cover for it could be a booklet, a passport, a portfolio, anything you like but here is an easy way to do it. Um, very I think it's efficient and um, just fun ways that you can use up your fabric and um, you can use bedding, bed sheets, old clothing, a thinner muslin works super. If you have quilting squares let me show you how I make these. Very easy and they're just a launching pad for you to take off with some ideas from there. Uh, welcome, welcome to the messy desk. That's what the channel should be called, The Messy Desk. Okay, so um, yeah, I think of a new channel name every time I do the show. Okay, um, so what did we do? Well, we pick a background, like, like what fabric would you like on the outside of your cool little um, uh, portfolio, folder, journal cover, what have you not? Okay, um, and let's say I'm going to pick this pretty fabric and this pretty fabric just happens to be 10 by 10, but you can use any size, any square um, uh, will work. Ooh, let's get organized and um, uh, let's go to it. Okay, so here I turn it over and I grabbed a piece of chipboard. Now this stuff I got from my husband's dry cleaning shirts, but you can also get a similarly thick thickness of chipboard from cereal boxes and cracker boxes and things like that. So just cut yourself out some squares for an easy way to do it. And um, I am going to take the rough side and I'm going to use my Yoohoo glue here because I'm trying to use it up. And um, I'm just going to glue the bejeebers out of the back or onto the back of this chipboard yipper doodles okay let me go over there this is a very quick impromptu video just uh, inspired i'm making a bunch of these and i thought why don't i show why don't i show this on a video so here we go um i was actually doing a little 15 minute med i call it med sleeping but i was like i'm attempting to meditate but i fell asleep you know how that goes and um that's what i woke up thinking about making these so i ran I literally ran into the craft room to start making these. So here we go. Okay, so there you have that. And then you grab your whatever you have for glue. I'm using Fabrifix, uh, fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper, no, fabric to fabric, paper to paper, fabric to paper, clear silicone glue. And I put it in a Sugar Bells icing piping bottle just for uh, ease of use. So I get a thinner stream. Double there, double there, double there, double there. Put your bunny ears down. Fold your bunny ears in. La da 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 da. Now go around and lasso all you up your bunnies with the glue string. La da 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 da. Can you see that? No. Okay. Going all the way around, just gluing everything there. Now there's two ways to do this part. You can just take the middle, pull it taut and glue it up nice and taut nice and taut and you can do the same thing here nice and taut nice and taut folding over your bunny ears nice and taut nice and taut now another way to do it is use your messy mat if you don't mind getting glue on everything you can use that to get nice crisp folds all right there we go so that gives us a nice crisp square which we can go anywhere and do a lot of things with this is like a base starter of a million and one ideas. Okay, this one went funny. My bunny ear got run over. <laughs> Back in with a program, little bunny ear. There you go. Okay. All right. We are running and rolling. All right. I would. No, which way's wider? Okay. That way is to there. That way is to there. So you are wider. I'm going the wide way because I'm going to fold it in half. Now I'm going to take another square of something that I would like to have on the middle and I just have a bunch of I totally forgot I had these and this is why it's so important to go through craft doors every once in a while just to see what you have and I like to put something sort of contrasting but sort of complementing because I want there to be a bit of a surprise on the inside um well that's sort of pretty yeah okay no too too similar okay so we're picking this is the hardest part this this is where everything slows down I gotta pick out one gotta pick out one all right that's all right I'll find one I'll find one um that's very different that's kind of cool i like that okay i'm doing that okay so now we're going to take 
I, for some reason, I'm changing the glue. The glue has to be on the inside. No, it doesn't have to be. It just happens to be what I'm using. Where's the glue? I know it's here. I can feel your presence because you were just here a second ago. Oh, all right. I already, um, I got to pull out a new one because I came to the end, the butt end of my, yes, you guessed it, my favorite glue, Scotch Create Glue Stick, permanent glue stick. Okay, so this one, this is going to fold to the inside. So I'm going around where the white is. And I'm covering it well. Oops, I think I have enough on this one to finish it up. And then I'm just going to run around a little bit on the edge of the fabric because I want the edge to be grabbed also by the glue. I am, now you could just glue this. You don't have to sew this, but I am going to sew this. So if those of you who want to sew it, you can sew it. Those of you who just want to stay glued, you can just stay glued and everything will be okay. The reason why I'm sewing it is because it's going to really anchor it down. Okay, this happens to be, I think this is an eight yeah this is an eight by eight okay so ten by ten for the big one eight by eight for the inner okay and now we're going to put it down i'm going to put the roughy edge on top there we go it's going to cover all our foibles and ebles and oobles going from the center smoosh out whoop, center smoosh out and if you get a little a little a little bumpy go back in and just relieve it and then smoosh out again All right, and just, you can you have a few seconds to rearrange here, which is good. That's why it's, it's good to start from the center and smoosh out, because you get rid of those little things. Okay, got that? All right, and you could be totally done here. And that would be great. If you have a sewing machine, hang on. Okay, I've made a huge change to my craft room. I have invited my sewing machine to live on my craft desk, as opposed to me always having to swing over there and swing the camera around. We are all living here happily in one place. So here, it's like it's not here, but it's actually right there. So all I have to do, swing it over here. And let me just rearrange you a little bit. Work with me, I'm just a little new at this part. Don't, don't, don't mind that mess back there. Just, just don't look at that. Okay, so I have, uh, I think green in the bobbin. No, I think, no, purple in the bobbin and black up here because that's what's in. But you can put any colors you like. And I've got it on a zigzag. It's very dark over here all of a sudden. Okay, why is that? Okay. Um, okay. All right, and now I'm, uh, I made them a little wider, a little longer, and a little wider. Um, not a big deal. And uh, by, by playing with these buttons, this Yep, I played with those four buttons there. Okay, there you go. There's your instruction. Uh, find your <laughs> specific model. Find out where the buttons are to change uh, the length of the stitch and the width of the stitch. And then we go. And we're going. And we're going. And I've got the, uh, the, the actual edge of the fabric going at the middle mark on the foot. Get to the edge. And we go, turn, going around, going around. Somebody told me about a walking foot. I know not of this, but I will learn. They said it's much easier to go over bumpy surfaces if you're trying to grab things. Okay, so now what this is doing is permanently anchoring this inner piece to the outer piece. Plus at the same time, I am magically decorating the front cover with a zigzag stitch. So it's like a two-fold special. Okay, turn. Okay, turn. Oop, I missed the edge there. Okay. Now, you guys are probably better seamstresses than me. So, I'm doing my best here. A lot of pressure. Camera's on. It's all lot, and I'm just going to do the back and forth. Back and forth. To anchor it in, and we are done the sewing. That's it. Okay. So, okay, there we go. We have it. Okay, hang in. Okay, my, magic, my magical sewing scene just whoosked over there. It moved like four inches that way, but it's there. This is wider, so this is what it's gonna be like. And then once you make one of these, you have the measurement. Oh, my square was uh, 10 by 10, I believe. No, no, that's a big fat lie. My big one was 10 by 10. My little one is eight by eight. So I would say nine by nine. How about that? That will work. Okay. Um, now how I measured it was, you can do it two ways. You can find center if you have a craft mat. Okay, let's just zoom in a little bit. Um, and you want to find the perfect center, you center this between some squares and you leave the same amount 
Can you see this? Let me zoom in closer so you can see. There's like a little smidge left over here between the black line and it, and there's a little smidge. Well, there's a little smidge left over there, okay? And you want to make sure, let me just translate this all up in the same trajectory, that it looks the same, no, we can't see, at the bottom. There's a little smidge and a little smidge. That means this center dot, because you count in, you got one square, two square, three square, four square. This one's going to be your center, and the dot in the center is going to be your center of the center. So then you can lay down your ruler on the center, just a little left to the center, because you're going to use your favorite bone folder, which is right here. <laughs> okay, that's good. I hope. It always looks like it's not right when I'm doing Oh, it's not right. Okay. <laughs> just, a, just a little left to the center, just a little left to the center of the dot. Let me show you the dot, in case you've never seen the dot. You can barely see the dot on mine because uh, there's so much other stuff, but that's the dot right there. Marks the halfway point. So you go just a little to the left of it, just a little to the left of it, because your bone folder is going to take up space. Okay. Back up. All right. Okay. Here we go. All right. One, two, three. And that should give you a nice fold. So you don't need a fancy uh, bone folder. Or you don't need like a scoring board or anything like that. So now the best thing to do to be safe is to approximate your edges. That means bring your edges together. Okay. Hold it in the center. Don't let it go. It's like a little wet fish. It wants to get away on you. And you take it and you grab your bone folder and you smush north and then you smush south. And you go over it a couple times with your magic bone folder and you flip it over and you do the same thing. And now all of a sudden, magically, you have a very nice little uh, portfolio coverlet, passport, wallet. You could do so many things. You could sew the edges closed. You could glue them closed, make a nice little pocket, a purse. You could um, stuff these and make uh, notebooks, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make little mini journals out of these, and this will be so much fun. So there you go. I just thought that was fun. Want, want to see me make another one? Sure, I'm, I'm making them, so you might as well come along for the ride. Okay, you're pretty. You might go in on the inside of somebody. What would you like to... Oh, you might be pretty. What this lavender and then you on the inside because you've got some gray. Sure, why not? I just talked myself into it. And this one? Oh, it looks bigger. It looks bigger. What are we going to do about that, Pam? Okay, so this one is bigger than 10 by 10. This was more like a... There's Holly in the background. He's happily singing 12 by 12. We don't need it that big. So what are you going to do? You're going to you're gonna snip it. Yes, I am. I'm going to bring it down to size. So let's make it a 10 by 10. So I'm going to put a little snip there. And a little snip there at the 10. That was a little snip. How about a bigger snip than that? Okay, there we go. We're going to use the power of the tear. Tearing. And if I did it wrong, it's okay. I have more squares. Yeah, I went like quilt square crazy because I just thought, oh, it's so nice to have somebody already cut the square for me, you know? Because sometimes it's a little tricky getting the square just so. Okay, so that one. Um, is going to go there. I didn't leave myself a lot of wiggle room there. Maybe you want to go a little bit bigger, um, but that's okay. You could maybe do 11 by 11. That would work too. Um, okay. Just make it bigger than your square. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> where's my yoo-hoo? Yoo-hoo! Here you are. Okay. You have a weird thing on you. Let's remove that. Okay, and then let's get gluing. Around the world we go, and through the middle in the snow. There's lots of snow in the country right now. People's toes are cold. We hope they're drinking lots of hot chocolate to make up for it. And sitting by warm fireplaces. And the pipes aren't freezing. Okay. I think it's warm in Texas now. I think. I haven't watched the news lately in a while. I'm tired of it. <laughs> Rather craft, you know what I mean? Rather craft. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Check in the back. Just to make it all sure it's all nice and smooth and there's no wrinkles. Come back over to the side. And we're going to do our bunny ears. Ready? I've got glue hairs and everything sticking to me today. That's just one of those days. Little Dabaluya, Fabrifix in the corners. Good strong glue grabs pretty fast. Okay. Flop your bunny ears down. Whoop. You can do them two at a time once you get the hang of it. Watch this maneuver. Oh, can't, get, get away from me. Okay, ready? Two bunny ears at the same time. Okay. Now, cover your glue. <laughs> Always a good idea. All right, go around now. Um, you're going to lasso all the bunny ears and the sides together with this magic bead 
this magic rope of glue. It'll hold everything together. And then this is where you can do it two ways. We'll start with the easier way, but sometimes you like to switch to the other way because it's faster. Okay. <laughs> There's no rush. You can relax. There's no pressure. I just make these easier fun. I'm, I'm doing like a little assembly line, so I'm all excited and I've made a few, so I've, I'm kind of rolling with it. You know what I mean? I got my groove on. Um, you know, sometimes I look back at my stuff that I made a while ago and I have absolutely no idea <laughs> how I made it. And truth be told, sometimes I have to go watch my own video to see how I did it because uh, I forget, you know, maybe it's just, you know, getting old, rolling a glue ball off my fingers there. Okay. And this last one, we'll do the other demonstration of the technique of the the uh, flip over on the table, giving the sharp edge and just push it down a little bit. Okay. And then check for any... Um, wayward bunny ears and you can just tack them down okay bunny ears are being tacked we're going with the wideness hello holly making nice 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 bright noises and we're going to put you here as you're going to cover all the way i don't have to do any fancy cutting or tearing with this one it just magically fits and this one okay this whole thing oh no this one's smaller for some reason this one is why is that i don't know nine and three quarters by nine and a half i have no idea why that's happening Nope, no idea at all. Nope, just make sure you have squares. Make they're, sure they're about an inch, inch and a half bigger, smaller than each other. Okay, there we go. Let's get this down. Here's the glue. Okay, if we do another one, I'm gonna measure. I'm gonna measure every one of them so you know exactly because I don't want to leave you out in the dark. Okay, here we go. There's nothing left there. Give that one up. I know I could scoop it out, but you know sometimes you just gotta go with the flow. Yep, here comes the hot flash. Okay. I had the heater on here a second ago, but now it's like a hundred million degrees. What's that, Sonny? No, nope, he's sleeping. He's like, Mom, don't bother me. I'm growing. I'm grow. I'm sleeping and growing. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we took him to a little outdoor restaurant last night. Visit some friends. Oh, he was the star of the show. Let me tell you. But yeah, people were oogling from other tables. It's true. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Um, There we go, you just lay it down on it and it smoosh from the center, smoosh. There we go. All right, now you went around, you did the little extra edge. And now by the magic of camera work and the fact that the sewing machine has a new corner, I think I'm gonna sneeze. I think I'm gonna sneeze, hang on. Okay, you'll never know if I sneezed. All right, I sneezed, I'll tell you. I did, I sneezed. <laughs> All right, here, I'm just gonna do the exact same thing I did before. And um, it's on number four, which is a zigzag. And I put it to 1.8 length and 4.5 width that's what my computer shows on the com thing it's not a fancy machine i got it from walmart and i just warned it it's gonna have to deal with a rookie like me and then we go around and we sew it this is a fun way to get you could like make a bunch of these up and then use them for different things because they're versatile so Trying to get you to look at the things that you make in different ways. And um, there's a million, you could make like little, like fold over envelopes with these. Okay, turning the corners. Oh, what happened? I ran out of something. Oh, you know what I ran out of? See, this happens. This is like live action sewing. The bobbin's empty. Yeah, imagine that. Okay, so we'll turn it off so I don't, I don't kill myself. Take the bobbin out, all right? Yeah, it's pretty empty. Okay, we'll get another one. Hang on, I got a different color. Oh, I have green. That's a nice contrasting color. I have so much glue stuck to my fingers and threads. And, and you can still craft like that. I want you to know it's like um, a hobbit crafting with hairy, hairy knuckles. That's kind of what it looks like and feels like. Um, but I'm carrying on. I'm carrying on. Does that, does that, does that bug you? <laughs> It might. <laughs> um, okay, so let's let's try that again. And um, and we're sewing. I'm just gonna put it back down. I'm putting the edge of the pinky fabric right where the, the middle mark is in the thing. Now I have to reset my machine. I have to move it to number four to give me the zigzag. Go to eight. I moved every one of those, like the length and the width up one, two points each. And we're sewing. And we're sewing. Is there anything behind me? Yeah, let me move some stuff. See, this is a very new setup, so here we go. Function first, pretty second as far as the room set up and the drawers. Um, but when it comes to journals, they can be pretty right from the get-go. That's the whole idea, right? To make them fun. 
pretty and eye appealing and um, something to tweak your interest. Inspirational, fun to do. All right, here we go. Coming around the corner. Last corner. Now you could you could maybe leave one open and have pockets and stuff like that, all sorts of stuff. But my grand plan, my grand plan is to turn these into some really cool notebooks. Let's see how that happens. Maybe I'll do some bundles or something with these. All right, here we go. All right, let's see. I'm in bundle mood again. Okay, here we go. Yay, look at that. Let me go closer. It's always like a weird fisheye look with that one, isn't it? Okay, and I'll trim all these little stringies and everything later. Um, okay, so moving this out of the way. I have to move my glue. Somebody put the glue. I need one more table in here with my 45 tables. Um, okay, so this, this is the wide way, right? Go the wider way. You could do either way. It's not like right or wrong. It's just different. Different. Okay. Oh, I'm not going to use that. This. Oh, I was going to show you the other way to measure it. Like if you have a bunch of these going and you already have them, if they're all cut to the same size, you can use it as your marker uh, of where to the, where the middle is. So you just come along and you, you do one of those. And you see, because you know this one's already folded, goes there. And then you show the bottom and you do the same thing. You put this cross exact. Put it right there in the middle. And then you come along with this. Okay. And yeah. Okay. And then you, you line up their little do what? I've got like 75 strings stuck to me. Um, there's a point where you just have to peel them off and roll them in a ball and they go. There they go. Okay, here we go. So just a little to the left of your mark. That looks pretty good, I'd say. Where's my bone folder? Oh no. Oh no. Wait. Don't anybody move. Is it under my sewing machine? No. Is it over here? Yes. Okay. All right. Realigning. Something probably moved. It always does. <laughs> three times. One, two, and three is the magic number. Kind of like you're cutting a birthday cake. Okay, we're going to cut like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, now, yep, Polly's in a singing mood. Okay, see, my machine is doing weird things. See that? But I think that's kind of built-in struggle in the piece, which looks like it was handmade by a two-year-old. But um, you, you, it can look really good, too. Yeah, like there's, I don't know. Sometimes it comes out really good. And, and I'm sure the glue does grab a little bit on the needle, and it probably changes. If you get those all aligned and you come here, it's going to fix any little foible you did with your measuring. It's going to be darn perfect, as perfect gets around these parts. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Ah, a ah, little flapper room. All covered nicely and sealed on the inside and outside and ready uh, to do anything that you like with it. Okay, and um, so we got another one of those. So I thought you would just get a kick out of that and, um, you know, just kind of see how those go. They're very quick, very easy. What, you want me to make another? Sure, sure, I'm here. I'll do another. I mean, I can just keep making these with you. Okay, here we go. Here's one. Oh, the measurements. That's what I was going to do. Exact measurements, Pam, please. Okay, this one really is 10 by 10. 10 by 10. Okay. My cardboard cutouts, my chipboard from my husband's laundered shirts are officially... Uh-huh. These are not exactly the same. That's why... They are eight and a half by eight and three quarters. How about that? So it's wider this way. This is exactly square. This is not exactly square, but it's still going to work. So we're going to work with that. Okay. I've got the Yoohoo. Uh, Yoohoo, um, a lot of people love it. It's not as sticky as a uh, uh, Scotch Create glue, um, but you know, I mean, for lighter projects, and I'm just using it to tack this down temporarily w until I sew it. So I don't need a super strong glue. The reason why I use the Create glue on the inside is because I think, I don't know, I just feel like there's more, this this has more of a chance to move because it's not being pulled taut the way this is. So the, pull, the folding and then the pulling of the fabric is going to get rid of any wrinkles or something that, you know, may be loose. But inside, it's going to buckle more. So I want the really good glue where it counts. So there you go. That's my, my reasoning. And I want to use it up. I'm trying to use up what I have. There's nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly good glue. You who lovers unite. I hear you. I hear you. Um, Sally in the back there who loves her you who. Okay. Little dab of Fabrifix. Little dab of Fabrifix. Little dab of Fabrifix. You could probably do this with the Scotch Create glue too, but you might have to wait a little longer for it to dry. Bunny ears down. 
Bunny ears up. Okay. Where's my pretty under one? Oh, I, I, I thought this was kind of cute. That, that's pretty, huh? Okay, we'll go with that one. All right, now let's do the rope around. We're corralling all the bunnies. Corral. And see, it's Easter coming up, so it's totally normal to sing about bunnies. Um, have, has anybody else been singing about bunnies? No? Great. Just, um, I'll be leaving now. Thank you very much. <laughs> the grand show is over. Uh, I don't know. I think when I'm singing, I'm happy. So that's a good sign, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys sing while you work? Or are there too many people? See, my husband's upstairs with his earphones on, so he doesn't have to hear me sing. And the parrot, he was, I think he was already singing, so I pretended like I joined in. And I'm part of the, the family, so he's like, oh yeah, mom sings too. Go ahead, mom, it's your turn. And then he'll take over and show me how it's done, because he's much better at the singing thing than I am. Closing the view who? Opening the Fabrifix, or not the Fabrifix, the Scotch Create glue stick. Seems so far away. You're in the fisheye mode. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah. All right, just gluing around on the paper itself, just getting all the glue down there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. This is super sticky glue, so it's really going to grab that fabric. And it's actually not a bad fabric glue. I almost think you could probably do this with just um, this glue. You know, uh, really? I really think so. Um, but I just, I like the anchoring of the sewing. And I like the fact that it decorates at the same time that it anchors. And I think it, it, it um, it's just another fun thing to play with. That's it, really. You know, it doesn't matter if you use it or not. Um, there we go. Okay. And now we're going to try for center. Try for equilanding here. Equilanding. All right. Cross your fingers. Cross your fingers. There. Okay. Yeah. Okay, go center. Oh, a little more this way, but that'll be all right. You know why it's okay if it's a little more this way than that way? Because when it folds and they're in the beginning of the book, by the time they get to the end of the book, they're not measuring like, oh, is that the same as that? No, nobody knows that. Okay, now I told you. Now everybody knows. Okay. Um, Pam's off a quarter of an inch. Yep. Yep, she is. Okay. All right. Ugh. Okay. Now this has green, but you know, I like a little contrast. Okay, that's what we tell ourselves when we're using the, the thread that doesn't match. And we're going in here. Can you see? No. No, you can't see. There you go. <laughs> All right. Now you're in. Ready? And here we go. Sewing. Go maybe slow at first. Let your machine get used to it. Um, let the machine take the item. Like it's taking the project. And I'm, I'm helping it a little. I am. I am helping it a little. Keep turning. Oh, it's like no one up here. All right, here we go. And we're sewing, so yelling. La da 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 da. Hey! All right, coming to a corner. Let's slow down a little and turn the last corner. See, it doesn't, doesn't take that long to get around these things. And you get all this free musical entertainment. What's going to slow you down? Nothing. Oh, somebody calling you for dinner. Maybe, yeah. I, I would turn me off too if somebody called me for dinner. Um, here we go. Sewing is not as scary as you think. If I can do it, anybody can. Get one at Goodwill for 20 bucks so you're not afraid of breaking your fancy quilting machine. Maybe back that up, lock it in. Okay. And then I have this little thing to cut the threads on the side of this one, but you can just use scissors. Oh, there, look at, look at, look. And then the back, so you can see, comes out like all decorated already. You've already got a nice little Okay, it's not straight, but you know, like I said, we're going for that homemade look. Yeah, yeah, homemade, home sewn. Okay, now we're, okay, this is going to be up. And we'll do the measure on here, taking it like equidistant on this side, that side. Can you see that? Yep. Okay, there we go. Equidistant that side and that side. All right. On the bottoms too, make those, make sure they're the same. All right, now get your ruler, go for the center dot, center dot, line your ruler up with the center dot, just a little left to the center dot, so you make accommodation for the thickness of your bone folder. Um, do love the bone folder. Uh, yep, that's one of those things that I would definitely keep, the bone folder, the crocodile 2 Big Bite, and, and of course now my sewing machine because I, I really like using it, it's fun. 
it's not bare bones, but it's a little fancy pants. Okay, it's an upper level craft item. Not necessary, but sure a lot of fun. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I sound like I'm selling sewing machines. Yeah, so I'm, Goodwill's giving me a cut of the 20 bucks. <laughs> no. Okay, um, here we go. Yeah, I just want you to have fun, and I just don't want you to be intimidated by the darn thing because it's not as bad as you thought. I thought it was horrible my whole life, and I, I thought only other people could do it and that kind of thing, and it kept me away, and now I, I, I know what I was missing, and I'm glad I just, you know, rolled up my sleeves and got one and watched a couple YouTube videos on how to deal with my actual model get the darn thing loaded and ready. And once you get past that, you're rolling. It's just, you're rolling. There we go. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So I hope you had fun. Um, oh my goodness, 30 minutes already. Okay, hold on.